Hey there, welcome to First Five. If you're looking for encouragement, you came to the right place. Let's dive in. I feel like I've been talking a lot about the will of God lately. Like that's just been a conversation that's been on the hearts of like all of my friends and the people around me. Like, what are we doing? What am I doing right now? What does God want me to do? Like there seems to be a lot of question around purpose and calling and just really trying to figure that out in this season. And if I'm being super honest with you, I don't think in my late twenties, I'd have that kind of crisis of self, but clearly I haven't talked to anybody that's older than me. <laughs> Uh, because it's it seems to be what's happening with the people around the same age as me. Um, but really, it seems to be what's happening in culture at large. I think after 2020, after the global pandemic, I think we've all had to kind of like shift and allow the like the sands of our life to resettle. And for a lot of us, they still have it. I mean, you know, we're, we're two years past the the or three years actually past the initial onslaught of the global pandemic. And, and we're still trying to figure out like who we are. We're still trying to figure out how we operate and navigate in the world. We're we're still trying to figure out how it is that we do what it is we've been called to do. And frankly, what is it that we've been called to do? And I just feel like those seem to be a majority of the conversations I have nowadays where we're really, all of my friends were trying to discern what is the will of God? What should we do next? Where are we going? We were headed in one direction and God redirected our paths. And so what do you do? What do you do ultimately when, when you find yourself in that place of redirection, when you find yourself in that place where, where you are being pushed in a different direction than the one that you thought you were going to? And, and, and what does it mean to even pursue this dream or this call or this desire that's on your heart? How do you do that? How do we discern what the will of God for our life is? I'm super glad you asked all those questions, even though you didn't ask myself, but still, I'd love to share this concept with you. In the scriptures, it tells us that the will of God for our life, the will of God for us is our sanctification, right? So that just, and I've said this before on this podcast, so this is not a new concept for anyone that's been listening, but if you're new here, the Bible tells us the will of God for our life is our sanctification. That just means that we are looking more and more and more like Jesus. It is a continual process that will last the whole of our lives. And so the will of God for our lives is that we look more like him. That's ultimately what God is calling us to at any given moment or time but often when it comes to the specific will of god for your life like who should i marry what school should i go to like what job should i take what what opportunity should i jump into should i jump into this investment opportunity or should i jump into that one should i should i make this decision or should i make that one should i buy this house or should i buy that one we get really caught up in the specifics and we miss the overarching will of God and inviting that overarching will into the specific things that we're looking to do. I think we can usually find ourselves in one of two categories. Honestly, we're either moving without thinking or praying or processing with God, um, maybe because, you know, I don't know, you, you feel this permission to do that or, you, you know, you feel as if you've you just you have the the freedom to move and roam around because you're in Christ. I, I get that concept. I've operated a good majority of my life that way. And so I feel like you've got those two ends of the spectrum. You've got this one where you're moving and you're thinking without processing and praying and like consulting God on your decisions. And then you've got this one where you're like paralyzed by fear. Like it's like the paralysis of analysis. Like There's way too many decisions to make and you just don't know where to go. And so you don't make any because you feel as if, you know, God will just put it in your lap. God will just make it clear. And there are moments and times in which he does that, in which he just places things right in your lap. But I think we have the permission. If I'm reading the scriptures correctly, I look at Proverbs 16, 9. It's one of my favorite verses, and I quote it the most. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. I think we have the permission to plan our way, but ultimately it is God who is sovereign over our steps. So even if we plan in a certain direction, he has the ability, the freedom, and the permission to move us in whatever way. And I feel like I'm in a season where I'm being moved. I don't know if you feel that way too. I want to read the scripture to you. I want to look at, at Acts 16. 
And I want to look at something that uh, maybe gets avoided in this particular passage of scripture. Uh, I think we skip to the end of, of, of this little segment of scripture, this portion of scripture, and we don't look at the beginning. And I think in the beginning lies uh, some questions, some answers maybe to some questions you have about seeking the will of God for your life. So here we go. Acts 16, looking at verse six, it says, next Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. Then, coming to the border of Mysia, they headed north for the province of Bithynia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they went on through Mysia to the seaport of Troas. That night, Paul had a vision. A man from Macedonia in northern Greece was standing there pleading with him, come over to Macedonia and help us. So he decided to leave for Macedonia at once, having concluded that God was calling us to preach the good news there. This is really good. This is really good when it comes to the will of God. I think often we like to skip down to verse 10, where it gets real specific, verse 9 and 10, where it says, hey, a man from Macedonia in northern Greece was standing there. And so we just concluded that that was it. We had a dream. We had a vision of this man calling to us from Macedonia. So we went to Macedonia. But I think we miss what happened in verse six, seven, and eight. You see, the Bible tells us that Paul and Silas traveled to the area of Phrygia. They traveled to this area because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. The Holy Spirit had prevented them from going somewhere. So, so let's put this in context. They went to the province of Asia. Or they were headed toward the province of Asia, rather. They, they were headed in that direction. They were making plans to go to the province of Asia, and the Holy Spirit redirected them to somewhere else, to the area of Phrygia and Galatia. You see, they weren't afraid to knock on the door. And I think when we're talking about this fear of making decisions or this paralysis of analysis so much we can get stuck in the choices that we have, that we miss the opportunity to just walk in step with God. That if you are choosing to live a life that is holy and that is surrendered and you are pursuing Christ, listen, you're not going to get this 100% right. But we can't be so worried that we're going to miss it that we don't take a step in the direction. If the heart of man truly has the ability to plan his way, if we've been given the mind of Christ, then I think you have the ability to plan your way, to make decisions, but you have to be open and willing to God redirecting your pathway just like he did to Paul and Silas. They wanted to head to the province of Asia and the spirit of God moved them in another direction. And so then they came to the borders of Mysia and, headed, and, and they tried to head north for Bithynia. But again, the spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So they're knocking on doors, but the doors aren't opening. And that's a clear sign for them that they need to move in a different direction. So many times for us as believers, we like to knock on doors and then knock them down because we believe that we we're full of faith and we, we want to be able to push in the direction that we feel like we're called to when those are doors that were never meant to be opened by you. They were meant to be opened by God. And so what I love here is that they're knocking on doors. God is keeping those doors closed and then he opens a door, a door of opportunity for them to walk through. So it's not that he's, he's just placing everything in their lap. They, they are taking the steps forward necessary to accomplish what it is that they feel like God has called them to do. And yet, God is leading them in a particular direction. He's closing certain doors and he's opening others for the gospel to be able to proceed. And God is doing the same thing to us. He's closing certain doors. He's keeping certain doors closed. You're banging on doors and God's saying, I'm not letting you in that. And if you were to push your way through that door, you would have to sustain. You see, anything done outside of the will of God, you have to sustain yourself. If you push outside of the will, you've got to sustain that thing. You've got to sustain that dream. That doesn't mean that you're too far gone to be recorrected and redirected to the path that God has you on. But it does mean that so often we just get so zealous for the next opportunity that we can push right past what God is doing in a moment. So I really want you to see here, see this here. I want you to be encouraged that when we're talking about the will of God, just like we've talked before on this podcast, don't be afraid to ask the question, how does this make me look more like Jesus? If I head in this direction, how does this make me look more like Jesus? If I buy this house, how will this make me look more like Jesus? If I marry this person, how will this make me look more like Jesus? 
because ultimately that is the overarching will of God for our life, our sanctification to look more and more and more like Jesus. And we invite that overarching will into our specific decisions. We knock on the door, but we don't knock the door down. And we allow God in his timing to open the door to what it is that he's specifically calling us to. I really hope that that encouraged you today and that you learned something and you gained something from the word of God here. I hope this encouraged you today. We'll talk soon.